Hey, what is up, everybody? Welcome to Season 2, Episode 6 of the Aftershock Corner. So, um, I don't know if you guys have heard the news yet, but, um, we are going to be bringing this back to, uh, Massasoit Community College, uh, not next week's, but, uh, this week is going to be the last week we do it, um, via hangouts and stuff like that, so make sure you check out the, uh, Aftershock Corner next week. Um... But I'm here to give you this episode. Uh, it's season two, episode six, and um, I am going to be. Uh, I have a lot of topics I'm going to be talking about because I know I'm behind the ball on wrestling right now. Well, with WWE, anyways, I have to watch uh, NX. I have to watch the three most recent episodes and review the three most recent episodes of NXT. Um, I also have to watch. Um, SmackDown from last week and review that. And I'm also going to uh, do my predictions for WWE Roadblock. I uh, um, I know I didn't get a chance to watch Roadblock mainly because, but for a reason I'll talk about because I'm going to be doing my Roadblock review after I do get this episode up. Um, well, I may just decide just to do my Roadblock review and just incorporate this incorporate it in this video. I haven't really fully decided yet now. Not gonna lie, I'll uh, let you get, you know when I get to the Roblox portion. I just didn't get a chance to watch Roblox, but um, I'm gonna sit here and uh, review all this stuff because everybody knows I've been busy, so I have to catch up on this stuff. So um, before I uh, start, I have to tell you guys a story because um, it wouldn't be the aftershock corner without a story. So I have so here's my story. So. I went to Salem on Saturday. Um, my uncle was r running a 10-mile race, and um, we all went and supported him and all that stuff. And um, afterwards, uh, we went to um, out to l breakfast, um, and we went to um, this bar, really. Um, and I was drinking c soda. And this phone, I was, um, because we were trying to look up, like, where he ran and all that stuff. And I didn't know how to spell Salem. So I tried to hand my aunt the phone. And I hit my glass, and it just explodes everywhere. Like, it, and it, 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 like, it exploded all over the place. Um, like, literally, it, like, landed in her hands, and it looked like she was, like, Wolverine, which was really cool. And then it just went everywhere, went on the table, went on everybody's clothes on the floor nobody got cut or anything but it was just really weird like this cl like i just touched this cup and it like exploded like it didn't touch the ground or anything it just exploded so it must have been a defective cup but it was just really weird but uh that's the story so now that i've gone through the story now i'm going to be reviewing uh the three episodes of nxt i'm going to start with that then i'll review smackdown and then give my predictions for roblox and may or may not incorporate the review itself of roadblock so let me uh, start off with the first episode of NXT um, right now. Okay, so this episode of NXT took place on March 2nd, 2016. We had uh, Corey Graves and Tom Phillips on commentary for this show. I'm assuming they're going to be on commentary for the next episode, but I'm not exactly sure. And it starts off by showing like a build-up advertisement for the... Uh, for the match, for the main event between uh, Finn Balor and Neville. Talking about how they're both the longest reign in, well, they're both pretty much the longest reign in NXT champions. Because Finn Balor is like pretty close to breaking Neville's record. I don't know if he's already broken it by now, but. So, this match is a respectful, is um to pay respect to the NXT championship. And I actually like the video package a lot, it was really good. So then we got the first match on the show. It was the VOD Villains versus Bruno Knox and Tucker Knight. Um, I like what they're doing with the VOD Villains. I think I'm glad they're going the heel direction because I think they needed to be heel. Um, I think they were fine as faces, but I think they're actually better as heels. They're just I think th it just suits them a lot more to be heel. And like I said before, that they were running out of they didn't really have many heel tag teams in NXT. Um. So I'm glad, uh, so they had to turn somebody heel and the VOD villains makes the most sense. Because I think they probably originally wanted Team Alpha to be heel, but then they got over, so they had to turn some another tag team heel. Um, and in, 
Um, the Vaude villains beat Tucker Knight with the Wolven Dervish, and I thought they looked I thought they looked strong, so this was a fine match. And then um, we got Emma, Emma and Dana Brooke got interviewed, and they talk about um, how they're the pretty much the best in NXT, and um, how Emma is going to make an example of her opponent like she always does. And then it shows a video package showing everything that Finn Balor has done since he's come to NXT and WWE. And um, I thought that was good because uh, this was the hype. Um, this was the hype up the main event at the end of the show. It shows pretty much everything that he did, you know, since he's come to the dip company. Um, and then uh, Enzo Amore and Colin Cassidy are outside, and Enzo and, Moore, and well, Colin Cassidy's talking about how uh, da da how uh, Das and Dawson and they're call um, pretty much to attack him from behind, and he says that the first chance they get, the next time they see you, they're going to be standing over them holding the NXT Tag Team Championships. And then the Revel, the Rev Revel, I don't know how to say the tag team name yet because it's new to me, but the Revel are backstage. That's what they're calling themselves now. I think that's fine. I think it's weird that they're just now coming up with a tag team name for them, but whatever. But they're backstage and they're talking about how Enzo Amore and Colin Cassidy just attacked him from behind for no reason. And they're saying that... um. The only chance that they're going to get to hold their t NXT Tag Team titles is if is just to spit shine them. So they announced at Roadblock it's going to be the Rebel defending the NXT Tag Team titles against Enzo Amore and Colin Cassidy. Which I can't wait to see that match because I really enjoyed this Tag Team feud. It's a Tag Team feud with a purpose, with reason. And I hope that Enzo Amore and Colin Cassidy, I'm going to say this in my predictions, end up winning the Tag Team titles. And I'll get into why when I get, give my predictions at the end of this video. Um... Then we got Emma with Dana Brooke versus Santana Garrett. Um, this originally was a squash, but then I think it actually turned into a match. Santana Garrett had some good move sets in this match, and she actually looked decently strong. Um, and the crowd seemed to get behind Santana, Santana. But eventually, Emma won with the Emma Lock. I thought this was fine. Um, I still like that they're saying women's division match. I think uh, I like that they're hyping that up. And then um, William Regal, Eva Marie, and Nia Jax are backstage, and they recently cut a Eva Marie and Nia Jax recently cut a promo talking about how they're the great woman, how they're the greatest in NXT, and they deserve to have like the NXT Women's Title. And William Regal says that to prove yourself, you guys are going to team up again in another tag team match against Bailey and Asuka. So um, this is obviously going to set up like some future programming probably with Asuka and Nia Jax when they're facing Bailey for the NXT Women's title. And then Asuka will go on to win that match. So I like that they're doing that match. I think it makes sense. Um, and then uh, William Regal um, introduces the new NXT signee. And we knew it was coming. It's Austin Aries. And I'm really happy he's in NXT. Um... I'm a huge fan of his. I love his work. Um, my favorite, you know, uh, I loved him when TNA. Um, and I've talked about that before. Um, and I'm glad he's back. Because in TNA, when uh, towards the end of his run, he just wasn't the same Austin Aries as I saw him. He didn't really care anymore. So I'm glad he's in NXT, a place that will utilize him better. And um, he'll, he'll actually have a reason to care. Because in TNA, you really can't care much anymore because it's a dying company. Um... And I think in NXT, he's going to be able to thrive a lot better. And I can't wait to see him work matches against guys like Sami Zayn, against Samoa Joe, again, Finn Balor. Um, and I can't wait to see what he can do in NXT. I don't know why they didn't get him before, because they had him originally to do a voiceover for Jacob Cass when uh, they had him for WWE 12. I don't know why they didn't sign him then, but it's whatever. But um, he comes out. And uh, they hype it up. They even call him the greatest man that ever lived. I didn't. I like that the, um, they're sticking with that name. And then he gets attacked by Baron Corbin. Now this I'm kind of not a. I'm like mixed about because. Um, but let me just talk about. He gets attacked by Baron Corbin from behind. He throws him into the LAD board like in the ring, and then um, he hits the end of days on the floor, and he looks right at William Regal, and William Regal just looks mad about it. Now, I, I like this for the reason because it makes sense that Raven Corbin would do this because he said that he was going to ruin something of William Weagle's, and this was a big deal, so the fact that he ruined this was a huge deal. But I don't really like this as this kind of made Austin Aries look like a chump in his first WWE appearance, really. Um, 
and I didn't really like that. I kind of thought AOE oh, yeah, should have looked, you know, had at least either looked strong, but it does make sense in a way, so I'm mainly mixed about this. Um, I kind of hope, uh, but it looks like he, this is going to be Austin AOE's first feud, and I think they will utilize him better. They did kind of the same thing when Asuka came up, um, when uh, they had her um, have a segment with Dana Brooke and stuff, so maybe that's with a similar factor they're going with, because it probably, you know, what wouldn't have made. I but, um, I just don't really care. F but I just wish they kind of would have made Aries look not look like a chump, because it kind of felt like he, they made him look like a chump in his WWE debut. But kind of mad. I'm kind of a little upset about that. Um. And then we get the next match. It's Steve Cutler versus Elias Sampson. Like I've talked about before, Elias Sampson just gets better every week. And he was really good this week. This time, he did an air guitar, which was kind of weird because... But I think that's the whole purpose of this gimmick is it's supposed to be kind of weird. Um, he just randomly did it. I thought that was kind of cool. And uh, he won with uh, the neck breaker. But he really looked aggressive in this match. Actually, Steve Cutler ended up getting a cut above his right eye like immediately. And the only shame is, is I don't think this gimmick would translate very well into the main into the main roster. I think this is a gimmick that would only work on NXT because I think if this went to the main roster, this would be kind of like a job gimmick. Um, they would probably job them out to like, you know, you know, they would probably job them out on the main roster. But I really like his gimmick. I kind of hope they do a big match, have him have like a, have him, um, they utilize him at the NXT takeover because I think he's great, you know, um, I, uh, I originally thought this gimmick was gonna flop, and, uh, at first it did, but it kind of grew on me, I think, uh, his offense definitely is there, and I think his character definitely is there, I, this is just a nice, a different gimmick that we haven't seen, um, before, where he's the drifter, he wants to be by himself, I think they need to do something where, um, he needs, he, where he, uh, cuts a little bit of a promo, um, because he could probably be the Bray Wyatt of NXT, actually. Except uh, a better version of Bray Wyatt. Um, because this is, I think, what Bray Wyatt should be, kind of. Um, where you don't really know what Bray Wyatt's doing, and he has, and he just destroys people. And I would really like to see Elias Sampson do something um, great in NXT. But we'll have to wait and see. So then the hype blows are backstage, and... Um, um, what's his name? I just lost, I'm trying to think of his name. Mojo Lawley, um, is talking about how he's happy that they lost their first match to the VOD villains because this gives them a chance because now they're going to start taking their opponents more seriously on NXT. And Zack Ryder says that their goal is to be the best tag team in WWE. And they say that they're going to take out the VOD villains. And Mojo Lawley says, um, that. He's going to uh, take them out, um, and they talk about how they haven't been talking anymore when they do like their promos and stuff. But he doesn't say it that way. He says it like you know in a kayfabe way. And he says that the, when they take them out, they're not going to be able to say, talk at all. And then when they walk away, the vaude villains are just creep just creep up behind them. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, I really like. I think I really think the hype rolls are starting to be connected better as a tag team now. I think. The, um, they were fitting before, but I think now that they've had more chances to work together now, because I remember on an episode of uh, Breaking Ground, I believe it's called, um, where Mo Mojo Lolly and Zack Ryder talked about how they didn't really get the team much together, because Zack Ryder always had to do the main roster stuff. And then I think that you can definitely see that I think they have more time to work together now, because uh, Zack Ryder and Mojo Lo the hype roles, are really starting to connect well together on their main, um, on NXT now. They're starting to really connect, because uh, I think Mojo Lawley's definitely benefited from this, and I think Zack Ryder's benefited from this as well, because, um, like I talked about, I um, when we used to do the Master Soy Wrestling Corner, I like uh, that I, I, it keeps Zack Ryder on TV, and but not jobbing out, and I like this. I think this could be, uh, I think it, they could bring this up to the main roster, and actually, this would work on the main roster, but right now it still needs work, but with when it gets fully developed and when they actually uh, main roster ready, I think this could be great. And then uh, it shows a video package for Neville going through all the stuff that he's done really since he went up to the main WWE roster because it didn't really show much of an NXT run. Um, and I thought that was cool. 
And uh, then we get the main event. It's Finn Balor versus Neville. Um, Neville got a pretty good entrance at this match, too, actually. And I like this match. This wasn't a spot fest match. It was definitely a match that tried to tell a story. Uh, I thought Neville actually looked... Because I think with Neville, it kind of made me realize it in this match. All of his matches now in the WWE roster are kind of spot fest matches. He just does the big spots in the match. He doesn't really tell try to do tell a story because this Neville that I saw wrestle this match is the a different Neville that I've been seeing on the main roster. This is the Adrian Neville that I saw. Um, and they start off by doing chain wrestling. Um, at first, they start chain wrestling each other with Finn Balor doing a headlock and then Neville doing a wrist lock and, you know, the t normal stuff that they do when they chain wrestle if you've seen a wrestling match before. And then Neville hits a wicked shot right into the um, ribs, so he ends up dominating the match for a while. He hits a wicked drop kick right to the side of the head. And then eventually Neville has the upper hand and Finn Balor back drops him over the um, turnbuckle. And I actually... And he ends up smashing his face. Neville ends up going outside the ring and he smashes his face against the steel steps. And I this really surprised me because I thought Neville was going to land on the apron on his feet. But it didn't happen. So I thought that was awesome. Um, and then um, Neville hits a wicked clothesline in the match. Um, he, st he really starts to dominate uh, Finn Balor. Um, he hits that big moonsault that he hits on the floor. Um, and then eventually Finn Balor starts to make a comeback. Um... He hits a uh, drop kick outside the win, and then a like a he like holds the ropes and hits like a drop hits like a big kick while Neville's on the outside, um, and then um, Neville hits a suplex in the match. Neville ki uh, Finn Balor kicks out of it, and then um, Neville uh, and then uh, Neville goes for the red arrow a ton of times in this match, but Finn Balor counters it with a. Um, in, with the Insiguri and then Neville falls outside the win and then Finn Balor hits the the big swan taunt, the big flip that he hits on the outside and then eventually uh, Finn Balor goes for the coup de grace and Neville moves out of the, Neville um, attacks him and then he hits a Hurricane, um off the turnbuckle and then uh, Neville kicks out of it. Finn Balor hits the Pele kick and then um, Neville hit two German suplexes in this match which was cool. And then uh, Finn Balor hits a um, slim blade, and then he goes for the drop kick, but Ned Neville counters with a roll up, but ne Finn Balor kicks out of it. Then he hits the drop kick into the turnbuckle, and then he hits the coup de grace, and then he hits the double arm brain buster. Uh, I think th I guess this is going to be his new finisher now because they really put this over when he hits it afterwards. And Finn Balor won the match with that, so I think they're going to have this be his new finisher now. And I do like the finisher. Um, if he's it. Um, it's kind of like a nice way because when the guy gets up from his finish, um, Finn, um, Finn Balor can just easily hit it. And uh, I do like his new finisher. I don't know if it, uh, I kind of would just prefer him to just do the coup de grace. Because if, if this is just going to be his finisher, I think I would prefer it to have a better setup maybe. Like maybe when Neville um, get, drop kicks him into the corner, then he can get him into this double arm brain buster um, instead. Because it seems like kind of weird that he just gets the guy up afterwards and this does the double um, brain buster. I liked it at first when he did it the first time. Um, but I think if he's going to do it that way every time, he should do the drop kick into the corner. Then the guy, the guy, like Neville would bounce off the corner. Then, Neville, then Finn Balor would hit the double arm brain buster. Um, but, then that, but that's beside the point. But the match really was a really good uh, main event. I thought it was a great main event actually. Um, I didn't think it was awesome, but I thought it was great. I don't know if this is the best match. I remember they had a match before, um, and then they had a match that got Neville up to the WWE. So I don't know out of the three, because I saw all three matches. Out of the three I saw, I think the second one might be the best one. But I think this one um, definitely was great too. Then afterwards, uh, Finn Balor celebrated, and he walks backstage, and they shake hands and all that stuff. Um, and then afterwards, um, Sami Zayn and Samoa Joe get interviewed, and... They're going to have their two out of three falls match, which I'm about to watch in a couple minutes on the next episode of NXT. Um, and Samoa Joe talked about how ungrateful Sami Zayn is. Because the second, because if he didn't come to NXT, Sami Zayn wouldn't have a career right now. Which is, is kind of true. Which I like that they're putting that up. Um, because it makes storyline sense that he would say that. Because Kevin Owens would have just ended his career if uh, Finn Balor didn't... Uh, if, um, Samoa Joe didn't make his debut. 
And then Sami Zayn talks about um, how the only reason he's had success in NXT and been able to go right to the NXT Championship picture is because of the guys that have paved the way um, for you um, beforehand. And Sami Zayn talks about how you're not gonna uh, you're not gonna win the NXT Championship off my success. And Samoa Joe thinks that it's I thinks it's ironic that. He saved his career, but next week he's going to end his career. And I really love the dynamics with these two as a feud. I can't wait to see their two out of three falls match. I'm about to go watch it right now. And overall, I thought this was actually a, a, a pretty good episode of NXT. I liked uh, pretty much everything on it. Um, and it was good. You know, no, no, nothing to complain about. Maybe this... NXT signing thin where they had Baron Corbin make Austin make, made Austin Aries look like a chump. It did make sense storyline wise, but I just wasn't a fan of. I think Austin. It was Austin Aries' first night on NXT, and I didn't really like that they made him kind of look like a chump. Um, but it does get me to hate Baron Corbin too. So there was some good things in there, but that's it is a little bit of a nitpick because I kind of wish they wouldn't have made Austin Aries kind of look like a chump. But everything else was pretty good on this show. So uh, that's pretty much it. So if I had to rate this show. Um, this episode of NXT, I would rate it maybe a uh, 9 out of 10. Because um, the only thing I didn't like was that Austin Aries thing. But you know, you got to remember, too, there isn't a, there's no such thing as a perfect wrestling show. And there's no such thing as nothing can be perfect. Because if there was such thing as a perfect wrestling show, well, then that would be weird. Um, but anyhow, that's pretty much it. So I'm going to be now go watch the next episode of NXT and give you my review of that. Okay, so now we're on to the most recent episode of NXT. So after we, I review this episode, I will be all caught up with NXT. So that's awesome. Um, this episode took place on March 2nd, 2000. Actually, no, it didn't. Because I didn't update the date. It actually took place on March 9th, 2016. So let me fix that. Okay, that's fixed. So it took place on March 9th, 2016. We had the same people on commentary for this show. And it opens right up. William Regal comes out and um, says that there should be consequences for Baron Corbin since he attacked Austin Aries on his debut. But Austin Aries asked him not to take these consequences. Instead, at NXT TakeOver Dallas, it's going to be Baron Corbin versus Austin Aries. And then he says that tonight... We will finally announce a number one contender to the... Well, we will finally have a number one contender to the NXT Championship. And then that was his promo. I thought that was fine. You know, um... Did he need to come out to the win? Probably not. But it was fine. It wasn't just a nice short promo. Um, said everything he needed to say. And it didn't last too long. So I thought that was good. So then we get the only match on the show. It's the two out of three falls match. Um, and it, for the number one contendership to the NXT t Championship... Sami Zayn versus Samoa Joe. This went on the whole show. So uh, this match lasted the, pretty much the whole show. It was This was the only match. And I actually was fine with this. And this actually, I should mention too, was um, NXT's return to full sale. Because they were originally in a different arena, but they were still in Florida. They were in a university. But they returned to full sale. And uh, they really made this show, like, big. Because they had... P they had everybody there. They had Sasha Banks. They had Hideo Itami. They had uh, Larry Zabisco, Moro Wanalo. So they even they they had the Adam something. I forget his name, but uh, they had a lot of they made want they made this show feel big. Um, and this match was awesome. It was a definitely as of right now. This is the match of the year, in my opinion. If it, if you want my opinion on it. Um, this was just an awesome, just a great, pure wrestling match. That's what it was. Um, they started off by doing chain grapples, um, where Samoa, and Samoa Joe kept trying to kick Sami Zayn's leg out, and you had, um, then do chain grapples with Samoa Joe targeting in his head, um, and then S Sami Zayn, vice versa. Sami Zayn hitting some hip tosses on, on him, and then eventually, um, Samoa Joe ends up going outside the win. Sami Zayn hip tossed him outside the win. And then uh, Sami Zayn um, goes to go for a, for a dive on the outside. But instead he tricks him and does a flip back inside the win. I love it when he does that spot. And um, 
then eventually Samoa Joe ends up destroying Sami Zayn. He ends up uh, really picking him apart. Um, and uh, he gets the heat on him pretty much the entire match. Well, not the entire match, but most of the beginning of the match. Um, he uh, and uh, he gets the heat on Sami Zayn throughout a good portion of that part of the mat of the beginning of the match. Um, he really works him over, and uh, I thought that was awesome. Um, and then Sami Zayn makes a few comebacks with some clotheslines, um, and then um, he goes to do a drop kick, but Samoa Joe tries to get him into a uh, the muscle buster, but Sami Zayn gets out of it. Sam and then Samoa Joe. Ends up, um, sorry, I got a niche. Ends up, uh, hitting a clothesline and then he ends up hitting the senton on him and a knee to the face, uh, well, a knee drop. And, uh, there was points where Samoa Joe was like, it's not worth this. And he was just bullying Sami Zayn, telling him just to quit, uh, just slapping him right in the face, doing air bo boxing. Um, and, um, Samoa Joe even. He, like, took lengths, and Sami Zayn hit a moonsault on the floor, um, outside the ring, like a split, like a springboard, like, Starship Pain type of moonsault outside the ring, um, which looked really sick, uh, he went for a blue thunderball, but Samoa Joe ended up countering it, and then, um, he, into a scoop slam, um, and, uh, so, so, um, Samoa, they just really had a nice back and forth pure wrestling match, and then eventually, um, Sami Zayn hit a crossbody in the ring, but Samoa Joe kicked out of it. And then, um, Samoa Joe hit a Winsett Instagram while Sami Zayn was on the turnbuckle. He hit a Uenagi outside the, um, what, when Sami Zayn went to charge at him. Then eventually Samoa Joe heads up hitting the, uh, Muscle Buster for the first fall. And this, and they went, sold for a while, too, before they got to the first fall. And Sam Samoa Joe just pretty much destroys Sami Zayn throughout... Um, after he gets the first fall. And Sami Zayn even tried to get him into the Torquilla tor Clutch, um, several times, but Samoa Joe kept, was too strong for it. Um, and then eventually, uh, they fight outside the wind. Samoa Joe throws Sami Zayn into the steel steps. Samoa Joe hits an STO on the floor, but Sami Zayn, he's, he's gonna try to win by count out. Count out. Sami Zayn gets up getting back in the win, just in time. And then eventually, uh, out of nowhere, Sami Zayn gets him into the uh, Corkia clutch, and Samoa Joe ends up tapping out. So then the falls are down two to two apiece. Um, we're not one one to one, so they need one more fall. So they start brawling back and forth, and Sami Zayn hits a dive outside the win. Um, he hits a power bomb off the um, off the turnbuckle. He hits the DDT through the second turnbuckle on the outside, but this isn't enough to put. Samoa Joe away. So then eventually, um, he tries to do a second, um, he tries to go for the Huluva kick, but Samoa Joe counters into a power bomb and Sami Zayn kicks out of it, but then he gets him into a half Boston Crab and then turns it into a cross face, but Sami Zayn didn't end up tapping out. And then, um, Samoa Joe just destroys Sami Zayn throughout this point. He keeps hitting right hands and he ends up hitting a wicked it's kick right to the head. And, um, he pretty much tries to knock Sami Zayn out. He has the referee count him down, but Sami Zayn keeps getting up. And then there was one point where Sami Zayn just spun right up to his feet. He hit an ex um, exploder suplex into the corner, and he goes for the uh, halupa kick, but Sami Zayn... And then uh, e even before that, Sami Zayn got Samoa Joe into the Korkia clutch. Um, not the Korkia clutch, the, um, the rear naked choke. And Sami Zayn... But Samoa Joe was able to get out of the way, and then he gets him into the Korkia clutch, and, uh, Sami Zayn can't reach the ropes, and Samoa Joe uses one of his legs to hook, um, the hand that, the, to hook one of his hands, and Sami Zayn ends up passing out, and Samoa Joe wins, and becomes the brand new number one contender to the NXT Championship, so, I'm assuming they're gonna do Samoa Joe versus Finn Balor at NXT TakeOver Dallas, I have no idea what they're gonna do to, with, uh, Sami Zayn, and what made this match really enjoyable is you really didn't know what direction they were going to do go in. Yeah, you could say they were going to probably give it to Samoa Joe because he's the heel in the equation. And also because uh, Sami Zayn's pretty much also on the main roster now. So they want to have some so, feuding with Kevin Owens. So they want to have him um, look strong. So they want to have uh, 
so they wanted so Samoa and Samoa Joe still in NXT, but you really didn't know because you have Samoa Joe winning for that reason. But Sami Zayn also wanted to be a two-time NXT champion, and I'm assuming even though now he's kind of on the main roster, he's still gonna rest. NXT Takeover Dallas is probably gonna be his last match on NXT, so I'm assuming um. So I, that's why you you could have also seen it go in that direction, and then that's where they can have like Battle Club come in and interfere. So you know you just never knew. So um. With what they could do with Sami Zayn, um, is they could have him, um, I could say, I was going to originally say Baron Corbin, but he's kind of already in a feud. Um, I hear talks, they want to do short, you know, Nakamura, I don't know how to say his first name, versus Sami Zayn. I can't really say if that would be a good match or not, because I haven't seen Nakamura's work to tell you. Um, but they could do that match. They could do have him wrestle Elias Sampson. I know that's, too early for that, but I would really like to see Elias Sampson have be on it take over somehow. Um, or they could just have him just um but that's the but yeah, I think that's those are the options that they could go with with Sami Zayn. And I'm assuming that when NXT TakeOver Dallas t in happens, um Samoa Joe will end up beating Finn Balor for the NXT championship. Um but that's really tough to say as well because Finn Balor pretty much is the face of NXT. And um, you don't really have another face of NXT. The only one you really have is Apollo Crews. Um, but he's really... Uh, they haven't... But they still have to kind of build him. He's not really the face yet. He's just like... The, I think they're in the process of building it to him being the next face of NXT. So um, they really can't... Ha and if they have Finn Balor and Sami Zayn both go up to the main roster, I think that would kind of hurt NXT um, right now. Especially, I hear Bailey's going to be gone off NXT, so they're going to lose their three main drawing points of NXT. Um, so that would kind of hurt NXT a lot if uh, they lost those three like at the same time. Sami Zayn, because um, they would they would be gone like all at the same time, like gone. So uh, I think that would kind of hurt NXT. Um, and uh, if they lost them all, because Finn Balor's pretty much been their draw, their main, their. Um, their face, so they would kind of lose. They would kind of hurt NXT because they wouldn't really have a face of NXT. Um, and I don't know who what other faces besides Apollo Cruz could face Samoa Joe for the NXT title. Um, so I think they may keep the title on Finn Balor for that reason. Um, I could see Samoa Joe winning it though, because um, they still do have Austin Aries. He's always an option because I'm assuming he's gonna come out of. The, he's gonna beat Baron Corbin and NXT Takeover Dallas. Um, they have Biff Busick now, but I don't think, uh, if, uh, I don't know what's going on, I don't know what's going to go down with him right now. And, uh, they have a lot of good tag, they have a good tag team division right now, so, I think right now with NXT, they kind of, uh, need to have Finn Balor retain the title right now. But they're already going to lose probably Bailey. they're probably going to lose Sami Zayn, so I think, uh, it would be best for business probably to keep the title on Finn Balor, but we're gonna, but we still got three weeks to decide, so we're gonna wait and see, um, and that's my thoughts on NXT, so now I'm gonna go review SmackDown, and it feels good to be caught up on NXT, to be honest with you, it was actually nice to watch NXT, I actually had some enjoyment of watching wrestling again, because I haven't really had that in a while, so, uh, that's pretty much it, guys, I will, uh, be back to do my SmackDown review. Okay, so it's my birthday now. Um, 20 years old, so that's awesome. I just made a, uh, what I want for my birthday video, so check that out right up here. So, uh, now I'm gonna review SmackDown. It kinda sucks. I hope it's good. Please give me that, WWE. I'm about to watch SmackDown. I know technically it wasn't my birthday yet, but maybe you could have considered it making my early, making it my early birthday gift. So I'm gonna sit down and watch SmackDown. I think I read the, uh, info then. It said that Chris Jericho is gonna explain why he turned on AJ Styles. And Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn are going to be on Miz TV. So that's mainly why I watched SmackDown. Because I want to see that stuff. And Moa Wanalo and Byron Saxon and Jerry the Kid Lawler are going to be doing some great commentary work all throughout the show. So now that I've talked about the stuff that's possibly going to happen. Let me talk about when SmackDown took place. Because as I go through this show, I am going to um, give my thoughts in small, vid like in small videos and then... Combine all the SmackDown review in one big video. Like, it will probably be like doing the commercials or something like that. So, 
SmackDown took place on February 10th, 2016. And we're probably going to get Byron Saxon, Moa One Allo, and Jerry the Kim Lawler on commentary. One can only dream. But uh, yeah, now that I've went through that stuff, let's talk about SmackDown. Okay, so SmackDown opens up with Miz TV with... Uh... Hold on one second. So yeah, so SmackDown... I got a Facebook notification. But SmackDown opens up with Miz TV with Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens as the special guests. And Sami Zayn and uh, Sami Zayn comes out first, and Miz wants him to tell him his story. And Sami Zayn goes to tell her, you know, I've been wrestling for 14 years. I've wrestled all over the world, been on NXT for a few years. But Miz just wants to know what's going on with uh, the with Kevin Owens. He wants to know the drama, and he's like action. And when Sami Zayn said that, because he making him believe like it was a movie. When Sami Zayn get when he said that, Sami Zayn looked at him like, what the fuck? So then um. He talks about how they've uh, known each other. They've been best friends. Their careers have intertwined with each other. Talks about their history, how they were tag team partners and opponents. And uh, Sami Zayn was the best man at his wedding. But then, he th ironically enough, he debuted the night that Sami Zayn won the NXT Championship. And um, he says that ever since then, he developed a lot. Ever since he powerbombed me right on that win apron, my injuries... Um, kind of let you know like he led to his inju it led to his injuries um like a lot of it led to his injuries and uh Sami Zayn says that he never really got a full answer of why he did what he did so then the Miz says there's two sides to every story so he brings out Kevin Owens and they pumped in all these boos uh like uh like he was being boo like uh but you could see that people were cheering for him. And he, at first he doesn't come out, but then he comes out. And Kevin Owens says that he he got, he got gave him the full answer, but he just didn't give him the answer he wanted. He did it because it was best for business. Because It was best for his career. Because um, he talks about how um, Sami Zayn got called up to the main WWE a few years before he did. And look what happened. He, made, he debuted on Raw before Sami Zayn did. And he talks about um, how... Um, what I did on NXT wasn't personal. What what you did at the Royal Rumble and what you did on Raw was personal. And Sami Zayn talked about how um he is going to beat him for the Intercontinental Championship. And he was going to do it at WrestleMania. And uh, Kevin Owens says that he doesn't have the right to step in this win with him. Um, because of this, uh, this that was NXT. This is now the Kevin Owens show. And um, Sami Zayn wants to wrestle him right now. But Kevin Owens refuses. And, um, so then, um, Neville comes out. And what I actually, let me just say before I talk about Neville, I really loved the interaction that Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, they just were, really went all out on each other. It actually felt like you could, that they were speaking from the minds. And I think this, that's, they, I think it's because they're probably used to, um, communicating with each other. They're used to talking back at each other because they're best friends for one thing. And they, and they feuded before. And NXT, and then, you know, obviously in, like, the Win of Honor, um, and stuff like that. So, I'm really happy, I really liked the dynamics, and I, um, and then Neville comes out and says that they have unfinished business, pretty much, and he's gonna be the next Intercontinental Champion, and Miz says, look, you guys don't have a right to be the Intercontinental Champion, because while you guys were on the minor leagues, I made and vented WrestleMania, and I am a former five-time Intercontinental Champion. And then Sami Zayn gets in the mid's face and says, Your ladies of main event in WrestleMania are far, far, far behind you. So then he goes to talk to, to Kevin Owens, but Miz attacks him from behind, and Sami Zayn fights off Miz. And uh, he goes for the Haluva kick, but Miz rolls out of the ring and escapes. So it's probably going to end up being a tag match with these two, with Sami Zayn and Neville versus uh, Kevin Owens in the Miz. Um, I, um,. Did like this segment. I thought it was good. Now it looks like they're setting up a fatal four-way match at WrestleMania for the Intercontinental Championship. I wouldn't mind that, but I'd rather see a one-on-one -on -one match with Sami Zayn and uh, Kevin Owens at WrestleMania. I think that would really work. And if not, then they'll do the triple threat with the three NXT guys because it would make that would make sense as well. Um, I, I mean, I understand maybe you want to throw Miz in there because he's another heel, but it's just uh, I don't really want to see that. Uh, just do um. Either the triple threat, or, and you could throw Miz somewhere else, maybe in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, which it doesn't even look like they're actually going to do that because they haven't announced it at all. But I really don't want to see Miz. I understand you want to get Miz on Mania. Just find a different match for him, but 
we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, overall, a good segment here. I thought it was awesome. Okay, so I just finished the whole show. Um, just because, you know, I, uh, it was my birthday. I figured I'd just sit down and finish the rest of the show because I still got to watch Roblox and Monday Night Raw. So I figured it'd be faster if I just finished the whole show. And I was also busy doing other things today, so I didn't really have much of a chance to sit down and uh, do the review. But I'm here to do the review now. So let me talk about the stuff that happened on this show. So uh, we got the first actual match on the show. It was Neville and Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens and The Miz. Um... I thought this was a really solid tag team match here, um, it, and um, I thought it was really good. Um, it was nice to have, it was pretty much Sami Zayn's SmackDown debut, so I thought that was pretty cool. And uh, the heroes get the heat on Neville for a while, I thought um, that looked good. And then uh, Sami Zayn gets the hot tag, and uh, Kevin Owens doesn't want to make the tag to get in the match, so he just walks off, and Sami Zayn hits the Haluba kick on Miz for the win. So it looks like they're setting up some sort of match. Um, either way, it's going to be a triple threat with Neville, Sami Zayn, and Kevin Owens, um, or a Fatal 4 match with Miz included, so I'm not sure what's happening yet, we're going to have to wait and see, I kind of just hope they just do like a triple threat match maybe on Raw, or at Roblox, or if they, I know Rob, um, I haven't watched Roblox yet, so I'm talking about like Roblox hasn't happened, um, or maybe at, um, Roblox do a triple threat number one contenders match when it faces Kevin Owens for the title, but that's just a thought. So then, um, Gold does his backstage and he's taking a shit and he doesn't have any toilet paper. And our truth comes up and goes to give him some toilet paper. And this is pretty much saying that he now our truth wants to be his tag team partner, but now Gold does doesn't want to. It really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. He talks about how he left his kids to go swimming and he watched them. And made sure that they didn't drown. He was like their lifeguard. And he says that you have something I want. And I have something you want. And he gives them the toilet paper. And then gold dust goes in there. It was... Oh, it wasn't really that funny. I I think this has just kind of gotten stale. I think um, it just uh, it's, it isn't really going anywhere. It was just kind of eh. It was funny at the start. But I think it's too... This doesn't, It's just not really funny anymore. So then uh, we get Bree Bella versus uh, Summer Way with Lana on commentary. Uh, Lana doesn't really say anything. She just pretty much says, hey, I'm wanting to watch the match. Um, and she looked hot. On, um, she, she sat right on the commentator table. I thought that looked pretty hot. And uh, Bree Bella won with the uh, yes lock. I thought that was fine. Then afterwards, she hits the uh, Bree mode, like when she does the knee right to the face um, while... Summer Way's sitting up against the ropes. And afterwards, Lana attacks her from behind again and lays her out with a face buster. So it looks like they're trying to build up to a match. I hear they want to do like a tag team match with Brie Bella and somebody else versus Lana and Summer Way, Or something like that. Because I don't know if Lana can go into a one-on-one -on -one equation. But we'll have to wait and see. Then the next match is the Lucha Dragons versus Sheamus and Kim Barrett with Rusev. Um, they announced that the New Day are going to be defending the WWE Tag Team Championships at Roblox against uh, Sheamus and Ken Barrett. So this was a way to try to build up that match. Um, and I'm glad they're doing it there instead of at WrestleMania because I don't want to see the match at WrestleMania. Um, and this was a, actually a really good matchup here. I remember they had a match at on um, before on a Monday Night Raw in like November, but I thought this matchup was better. And the heels get the heat on Kalisto for a while. And then Sin Cara gets the hot tag and starts taking out Barrett. And Kalisto takes out um, Sheamus with a dive. And then uh, Rusev gets involved and uh, attacks uh, Sin Cara behind the referee's back. And Barrett beats Sin Cara with the bull hammer. And afterwards, uh, Ryback gets interviewed. And uh, Ryback was watching the match backstage on t television. And uh, he says that... Um, that that they gave that the Lucha Dragons gave it all they got, um, but they just proved that, um, and the but they just proved that there's a reason why little guys can't beat the big guys. Um, I'm not really digging what they're doing with Ryback right now. It's just kind of eh. It looks like they're trying to set up a match, a United States title match between Kalisto and Ryback. That match does have some storyline sense for happening, but the way they're going with it, I'm not really a huge fan of. And then uh, the Usos get interviewed, and they talk about how they've been watching the Dudley Boys since they were 10 years old, and they had respect for them, but now they don't have respect for them. And then Dolph Ziggler talks about how 
he got he had to suffer consequences on uh um for what he said about Stephanie McMahon, but he always has to suffer consequences. And Dean Ambrose said they're not gonna think about the authority tonight. They're gonna think he's gonna uh, they're gonna take out the Wyatt family and then um they're going to um Triple H he's gonna beat Triple H for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship um at Roadblock. So then we get the Wyatt family versus Dean Ambrose, Dolph Ziggler, and the Usos. I thought this was actually a pretty good main event here. I, th I had a lot of fun watching it. Uh, the heels get the heat on Dolph Ziggler for a while. And then uh, one of the Usos gets the hot tag. And the Usos start taking out Luke Harper and Eric Rowan. I thought that was fine. And then uh, one of the, the the Uso that's the legal man goes for the splash. But Harper gets the knees up. And then Dean Ambrose gets the hot tag on um, Eric Rowan. And he starts taking him out. And then everybody starts hitting their finishers on each other. Um, Bray Wyatt hits the Yoenagi on Dolph. Not Dolph, um, one of the Usos. And then Dolph Ziggler takes out Bray Wyatt. Dolph Ziggler hits two super kicks on Strowman, but he gets taken out. And then everybody just, t and then, uh, a um, a he go he goes, Strowman goes to take out Ambrose, but he gets charged into the turnbuckle. Eric Rowan tries to roll up Ambrose. Ambrose kicks out. He goes for a big kick, but Ambrose ducks out underneath it and hits the Dirty Deeds for the win. And that was the end of SmackDown. I actually liked SmackDown this week. I thought they, uh, um, had some good matchups on the show, and they actually felt like they were built into some storylines to WrestleMania, and they touched on the storyline with uh, Roadblock, so I actually like SmackDown. If I had to give it a grade, I would probably give it a uh, um, 7 out of 10. I thought it was actually a pretty good show. Um, so now that I've talked about that, let me do my uh, Roadblock predictions. Okay, so now for my WWE Roadblock predictions. Um... So let's start off with the first match. Now, I can't look it up what the matches are because the show's already happened and I don't want to be spoiled. So if I forget a match, I'm sorry. I'm just going off the cups of my head. So um, I know, I remember they announced a match, a Divas Championship match between Charlotte and Natalia. And I'm looking forward to that match because they both are really good in the win. Every time they have a match, it's always great chemistry. Um,. And I'm going to say Charlotte's going to retain the Divas Championship. She's pretty much destined to go into WrestleMania and defend the Divas title. They've already announced that she's going to have the triple threat match with Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch. So it would only make sense. It wouldn't make sense for Natalya to win. One, also Natalya hasn't really been featured on TV. So I think this is just a match because this show is in Canada. So I think they want to have give Natalya a nice Divas title match in her hometown and pretend they actually utilize Natalya when we know they really don't. So then uh, we have a WWE Tag Team Championship match between The New Day and Sheamus and Ken Barrett. I really, in, in a way, enjoy this feud mainly because of the stuff that The New Day has done to make fun of the League of Nations. I think that's been awesome. Uh, the New Day plays the League of Nations better than the League of Nations. Kofi Kingston does a better Sheamus than Sheamus does. It's scary. But uh, I'm going to say that uh, The New Day are going to retain the WWE Tag Team Championships here. I think they're going to just build to a match... Um, I'm th I think they're just going to have them hold the titles up until WrestleMania at this point because I think that makes sense. Either WrestleMania or the night after WrestleMania. I think that would make a lot of sense. And then we have the uh, NXT Tag Team Championship match between... Uh, I forget the name of the tag team. It's the Rival, I think it is. It's Dash and Dawson, the Mechanics, as I used to call them. And versus Enzo Amore and Colin Cassidy. This is probably the match I'm looking forward to the most. Um, and it's, I'm not going to give the main WWE roster credit. I'm going to give NXT credit for this because they've actually done a really good job building up this feud. I already talked about it in the beginning of the video. I've loved this tag team feud. Um, and I actually think they're going to put the NXT tag team titles on Enzo Amoy and Colin Cassidy. They've been built into it and built into it. And I think they're going to finally have their moment. They're on a big pay-per-view. And I think they're going to finally have their moment and win the NXT Tag Team titles here. And then if they want to drop them in a couple of weeks, then that's fine. So I hope they win the finally win the Tag Team titles. If they don't win the NXT Tag Team titles, I will say that at WrestleMania, they will beat the New Day for the WWE Tag Team titles. Because I think they're really over right now, and I think they would be awesome if they won the Tag Team titles, either here or at WrestleMania. So then um, we have the... We have Brock Lesnar versus Bray Wyatt. Brock Lesnar, I mean, it's Brock Lesnar, it's Bray Wyatt. It's, at least they're not doing it at WrestleMania because it would have been stupid. Um, I wish they would have kind of, you know, I mean, the Wyatt family just don't look credible. They they have no interest right now, so 
but it's going to be Brock Lesnar. And then we have the main event, the WWE World Heavyweight Championship match. Triple H defending the title against uh, Dean Ambrose. It's fairly obvious Triple H is going to retain the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. It's pretty much set in stone that it's going to be uh, Triple H versus Roman Reigns for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania. No, this doesn't change that. Uh, they just needed a filler opponent, I guess, temporarily since Roman Reigns was off TV. And I think they had to kind of do something. I don't know why they went in this direction, though, because now this makes me want to see this match happen at WrestleMania. Um... And then I want to see Dean Ambrose win the title and not Roman Reigns. That's, you know, this makes me want to see Dean Ambrose even more. And another flaw with this is that, um, you know, um, if you were just going to do this match at Roadblock, if you were just going to build to Dean Ambrose, why didn't Dean Ambrose win at Fastlane when they had the triple threat match? I think it's also really obvious, too, that uh, Brock Lesnar is going to come out and screw Dean Ambrose out of the matchup. I think that would make sense. They're going to both be there. They have to do something to uh, build tension with that feud. So that's uh, how it is. So that's my predictions for uh, WWE Roadblock. And I think I'm just going to end off the video, and I'm going to make Roadblock its own separate video. I will do a Roadblock review. Mainly because um, I uh, this video will be too long if I do it that way. And I at least want to get this video up um, right out of the way. So make sure to check out my Roadblock review. I'm going to go watch Roadblock right now. And uh, then, um, yeah, so make sure to check out uh, Roadblock, uh, my Roadblock review. I'll post it right up here when I actually get it uploaded and all that stuff. And obviously I'll let you know. But uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Um... Make sure to subscribe to this channel and uh, check out the Aftershock Corner. And that's pretty much it, guys. I will talk to you next time. And make sure to check out my WWE Roadblock review.